I'm bringing back the stash. I'm ca I can see myself in my computer, and it's been a while since I've had a stash. And this is that f that stage of mustache that's like you don't want to share with people, but what are you gonna do? You know, you just you just gotta do it. So it's coming back. I'm going full force. So what I wanted to talk about today, and it's the title of the stream. I hope everybody can hear me well and things look good. Let me just check this audio really quick here. Let's do something with some percussion on it. Whoa, that sounded insane. Not that one. How about this? Can you hear me over the music though? You look good, thanks. What's up, Troy? How are you, man? Good to see you. Troy is a good pal. Um, yeah, so I played that at Velocity. I'm not gonna lie, I had a MIDI issue for my set. Very disappointing for me. I am excited to, um, fortunately, I know some tricks with my Octatrack, and particularly with the template, that allow me to navigate these the minefield that is live live hardware electronic music and there's some tricks I'm going to share these tricks with you that are going to allow you to save your ass when you're performing sometimes you cannot be saved but there are some things that you can you can save and the Octatrack is going to help you do that um, and we'll get we'll get into that in a bit if I don't mention it anytime soon somebody remind me and I want to because I want to talk about it. Calderwood, what's up? Sound is good. I'd rather... I'd hear you better with a crisp bubbly in the back. Dude, Calderwood, are you are you kidding me, bro? You just missed the intro, my friend. We hit the crisp bubbly. We got the, the bottle cap opening and all. Hello from Austria. What's up? Austria. All right. What time is it in Austria? Early morning, I take it, right? Good man, yes. Um, cool. All right, I'm gonna switch to the top-down view because I think you've had enough of my face. I'm not gonna completely remove my face. I'll, I'll sit in the corner here. Um, whew, yeah, been a while since I streamed. I'm, I'm really stoked that, uh, that I don't, that it's, it, the sound's gonna be so much better now that we're going into winter because I don't have the AC blasting and, uh, you know, my compressor's not like accidentally grabbing some background noise and just amplifying it. So it's really nice. And yeah, hopefully the quality of the stream will just keep going up from here. My wife used to work the Bregan's Opera Festival. Oh, it must be in Australia. Austria, not Australia. Troy's in Australia. That's the mistake I'm making. Okay. So I'm gonna like really quickly uh, just show you these patterns and then I'm gonna like I'll maybe perform a couple of them like for real perform them like how I would like them to be heard at a show but I really want to have a discussion about the title of this and it's my thoughts and hopefully yours as well as we communicate with each other on how many patterns makes a song and if you go back on my channel to my very first Electron Talk stream it's called it's one uh, one pattern to make a song is the name of the stream. So this is 19 ep episode 19. So that was a long time ago. Um, and I've kind of gone full circle. So in that stream, I was talking about this techno track that is called um, Nice Kiss that I made for a compilation album that we do on the Discord. And we'll be doing another one soon. So if you're not in the Discord, you should join, if not just for that, but also to hang out and talk about gear. It's a really nice and chill place to be, and I'll have a link to it in the chat description. I'll have a link to it in the comments, is what I mean to say. Um, anyhow, in that stream, I'm talking about using one pattern to make a full song, and I don't have it loaded up right now, so I, I can't really demonstrate it to you uh, at this moment. Maybe we'll write something and kind of use that as a, as a way to demonstrate that. I feel like this compressor is like going a little crazy, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, Richard Braun, what up, dude? I was gonna hang out with Richard tonight, but he's he's leaving Seattle. 
It sucks. Um, yeah, next compilation is going to be dope. So in that in that discussion, I was talking about using one pattern to make a track, and it brings me back to a time that I saw Jeremy perform at Patchworks actually, and I raised my hand during the questions time just to be a jerk, I guess, but not really. I really did want to know. I wanted to know how many patterns per song he was doing, and he was just using one pattern for all of his songs. And I was like, that's cool, because I, I, I totally get that vibe and I like that, and it lets you write music really quickly. Like, you're just like, I'm gonna flesh out a pattern, but it, it kind of like, it puts you in a box. So there's, there's certain genres that lend themselves to one pattern for a song, and um, most of them are four on the floor, kind of techno style tracks, and it could be melodic techno, or just techno, or trance even, maybe. Maybe trance more stuff, but more patterns. But it's my opinion that the more melodic content you have in your music, the more patterns you're gonna have to write. So if you're making mostly rhythmic stuff that's a little bit atonal, like maybe it has like a note that's kind of like there that people can latch onto, you'll be able to have uh, just play with hi-hats, uh, adjust the filter cutoff on your bass line, maybe some other you know opening of your hi-hats, putting reverb or delay on snares, messing with stuff like that, just, just doing some like manual adjustments to your sound palette. Whereas stuff that's more melodic uh, gets boring faster because people acclimate to the melody really quickly. So like, um, well, I don't have a like um, about it. That's just, that's kind of my opinion about the whole thing. I think that you're more, it's more interactive with your machines to play music that is like techno, uh, melodic techno, house, stuff like that. Because you spend more time doing these fun adjustments and movements on your gear. Whereas with stuff that's more melodic, you spend more time thinking about moving to the next pattern because there's so many patterns. So you're in your head a little bit more about your pattern changes because they need to be at the right time. I mean, you could use the arranger and the ox track. I, I don't like to. But um, I do think that it's kind of true what I'm saying. I, be I believe in what I'm saying, <laughs> that is. And I'm gonna demonstrate a little bit and then maybe we'll try and make like a little techno uh, track to demonstrate what I meant by only needing one pattern to make a song when it comes to techno and uh, and its relatives, and the, all the other genres that kind of fall into that same category. Now there's the stuff that I make and I recently found out what my genre was. It's like many, many years into making music uh, on these boxes. I've always made music. I've been a guitar player and singer songwriter for a long, long time. And if that doesn't come through in my music, I think it kind of does because the kind of stuff I write kind of sometimes can sound like a band. And that's because that's where my brain's at still from those days. Um, so I can definitely demonstrate my genre now, which is which is cool. So I guess my genre falls into electro house, turns out. That's when I click on other electro house songs, I'm like, that sounds familiar. That sounds a lot like my style. There's a lot of melody, um, and which I'm finding is my thing, you know? I love melody, I love writing melody. I hear additional notes every time I hear a chord play, I hear another note, I hear a you know, the resolutions, I want to resolve chords, or I want dissonance, um, I don't know, just all that. That stuff is, is happening in my head, and I feel like a lot of times with, like, techno-inspired music, there's less of that, and more of you, like, writing this feeling. It's more of an experience and less of a song, so to speak. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong. So I'm going to play some music for you that I consider to be Electro House. And, uh, but first let me just show these patterns super fast, like I had mentioned. So, I opened the show at Velocity with this track. Which, to my surprise, is getting a lot of love in the comments in my, uh, last video. People really like this, like, IDM-style track.
lots of glitchy stuff. It's a lot of fun to play because you just kind of you get to mess around a lot with uh, freeze delays and stuff. Give an example of Electro House. Who is good in the genre? Oh yeah, God, there was one. Orbital, I think, is one that people often compare me to. Um, and I think that would be like Electro House. I would say like Suryusmo, Suryusmo, I don't know if I'm saying that right, um, is like Electro House. Justice is Electro House. Daft Punk go, goes into Electro House, it comes out of Electro House, goes, you know, because they're like uh, French, French house, right? Yeah. Yeah, so people are really enjoying this track. And I've been, what's really cool and I found kind of interesting is I released the performance video. Some people listened to the music, which is really nice. And thank you very much for all the comments and for listening to my music. I really do appreciate it. This is all, for me, this channel is all about making music. It's all about live performance and making music and nothing else. If I'm ever doing anything else on here with some other inspired stuff, it's because that's really, I'm really keen on it. I think it's super cool and I just want to share it with folks, but this, yeah, this is what it's about. So it feels really good when people like the music and talk about it. But I used the comments section to uh, go back into my projects before Velocity and add uh, more to the existing songs that I had so that they would be more fun at the show, just more fleshed out, because I saw what people are really liking, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna work on those ones particularly um, to give people a better show. So that was kind of cool, I hadn't done that before, I hadn't used the comment section to improve my music before, and so it was kind of nice to use the, the forum in that way. Troy Outram, I love Justice, yeah, me too. Uh, really cool music. Absolutely excellent tunes. So back on um, back on this topic here, we're um, we're talking about this one. How many patterns does it take to make a song? And this song that I was just playing is just actually one pattern for the whole song, but it's a really short song. Um, but it just keeps building up, and then I take some elements away. And I don't know how this song breaks the mold with that. Uh, the ideas I was talking about there. Because it's highly melodic, but still only one pattern. So it like almost contradicts everything I'm talking about, but I still I still believe in what I was saying about the more me melody that you have in your song, the um, the more patterns you're going to end up writing. Particularly with like electron boxes, we will run out of of space here. And uh, just to discuss a little bit, also side side topic sidebar, what I'm doing with my production now has I feel like reached its culmination or it's it's precipice it's it's I'm done trying to figure out what I'm doing like I've always been like what's the system what's the setup well I, I got it figured out now it's the dig attack on drums and vocal samples which is the way it's always been and I sample some stuff I got my little tx6 mixer here I plug stuff into it and I sample into my dig attack I got the digitone for fm sounds of course but also for chords and pads so we can actually do you know polyphonic stuff here 
And then I've got my Syntact for any other sounds I need. So analog synthesizer, um, uh, just different elements that I can't find other places because you can only do so much manipulation to samples. You can do a lot of manipulation to um, synthesis. You know, you can you can change the timbre in ways that you just can't with samples. Samples are just a snapshot of a sound. This is the actual sound generator. And I like thinking of it that way, that samples are just a snapshot and you get to mess around with that snapshot's time, basically. This, you don't mess around with its time. You can just mess around with its engine. Um, and then I, so I have the Digitone running into the Syntact, and then I just max out the mixer on here, keep all these levels kind of low. I have to put this one up a little higher because the, the Digitone just doesn't output volumes at the same level, or at least mine doesn't anymore, as the Syntact and the Digitac do. Run that into my aux track on the other stereo input, and that's it. I uh, do cool stuff, take advantage of like sidechain pumping and you know parameter lock sidechain pumping to my patterns and stuff, particularly like this song. Yeah, exactly. Syntax can fill the gaps. That's kind of like, uh... oh man, so sorry to hear that, Doug. Jeez Louise, dude. Um... Oh, well, that's good. Glad to hear that about your gear. Sorry about your mom, man. It's awful. Yeah, very, very not cool. Yeah, the A4 is great. Um, yes. Okay. <laughs> that really throws a wrench in my, in my brain. You sharing that news with me right now. Um, being autistic it is more of a blow because she was my primary caregiver. Yeah. Gemma, chill. That's my pooch. Going nuts. I'm sorry to hear that. I will, we can chat about this later, Doug, on, um, privately, so you don't have to air this to the entire internet. Okay? Um, okay, let's, let's get back to the tunes. Um, right. Yeah, that really, yeah, that really, that would be cool. Yeah, you're going to have to message me privately about that, Doug. Because I can't talk about Patchworks on stream. Other than, you know, go buy some stuff from Patchworks. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, back to the one pattern per song idea. I'm going to play this track. And Doug, I'll reach out to you, okay? Don't, don't sweat it, man. I'm real sorry. Okay, I'm gonna play this song for you to kind of demonstrate what I was doing. Originally, it only had these two patterns, and um, we will, uh, now it's four patterns, so I was using the chat concepts to improve my song because they, uh, they were telling me what they liked, and they, they liked this song, and this is one of my favorites. <laughs> A lot of digitone in here.
did want to change right there.
That's it. I played a song for you. <laughs> uh, I really wanted that to be more fleshed out when I played at Velocity. I mean, this is exactly what I played at Velocity, but I had uh, a MIDI timing issue with my Octatrack. I had accidentally set my use pattern set length. It was set at 8 slash 16. And so it changed the patterns at the incorrect time. I was getting different timings. And I didn't get to, it was like, it was correct on most of the songs, but on this song it wasn't. So when I played the set, this song was not the way I just played it now, which is a bummer, but I love this song. I think it's super fun. Um, it's a lot of fun to play. There's not like too many places that I can tweak the sound, like the timbre of the sound. It's more about like playing with the ox track effects, which is my favorite thing to do, and uh, muting and unmuting parts. For the most part, I can play with some effects on here and adjust things, but it won't do that much just because the way the song is designed. But it it brings to mind the way I designed this song. This was performed and designed in a way that is very A B A B C D C. Actually, that is the pattern layout. So it's got a intro, it's got a bridge kind of, it's like a second verse, like it's a first verse, second verse, then it goes into a chorus, which is like this. This like happy breakdown kind of thing. And then we have this like, this like explosive halftime, which just feels super good after that four on the floor. And then we go back into it, just to, go back into a happy vibe at the end of the song. Um, that was written very much like you would write out a song on your guitar. Because that's the way my brain was feeling. Or th that's the way I was thinking, I mean, when I wrote that track. Um, yes. So, that's kind of uh, where I'm going with this. I have another track here. Which is very techno inspired. Um, it happens to be three patterns, and that's really just because I expanded the song more so it would be longer. But typically, my workflow is A B. So I would start off a track with one pattern, I will duplicate that pattern, alter it significantly, and um, try and make that song, those two patterns, last about seven minutes. That was always my goal three and a half one pattern, three and a half the next pattern and have them have a lot of um, consistent sounds, timbres, but have the second pattern be uh, more of a buildup, maybe having more energy to it. And I'm doing those things where I'm muting and unmuting stuff, but I'm also opening up hi-hats, closing hats, doing all that kind of stuff. The song I just played, you don't open hats and close hats. You just introduce hats, you know what I mean? Because it's not that kind of song. You don't need to have different the hi-hat's opening. We're not building tension through the noise the hi-hat is creating. We're not building drama in that way. The drama is designed in the sequence itself, um, which is just a different way of approaching the tunes. Now this song is different. This is more of a techno-inspired track. And this is one where taking the kick out, bringing the kick back in, using hats. This, really, this song doesn't need more than one pattern to have it be like, feel like, I'm okay with that, you know? We could play this intro for a little while, even. Play with high pass, low pass filter. That's really all we need. save the pattern to a temporary state, go to these hi-hats, and we could play with them. We could even live record playing with it. Went back to the original hats.
meant to bring those chords in like forever ago, like the intro. Maybe I should just leave them unmuted at the beginning of the track. Use the octa track as the master clock.
That was probably better than my performance at Velocity. God damn it. I mean, not a bad thing, but it would have been better if it was the other way around. Oh boy, oh boy. I'm gonna check out what the chat's up to. I've just been jamming, you know? Jamming. I hope you like a jamming too. Um, all right, I'm gonna go on all the way back up to Isaac Anthony. Try to do two patterns per song, and that doesn't seem enough. Yeah, well, you can stretch it with effects. That's what's so cool about the Octatrack or a good DJ mixer, is that you can stretch it with effects. You can make the pattern more interesting by soaking it in reverb or delay and just adjusting some notes, taking um, some stuff around. You know something that's really cool to do with like your digitone or, or, or any of them, but particularly with something that's doing the melodic element is that you can save your pattern state function. Yes. Right. And you can go into like, for instance, this baseline right here, I can hold function and use these arrow keys. I'm just shifting the timing of the pattern round, but it's might as well be giving me a brand new melody. That effect is so good on this song particularly. That's that's pretty fun. So um, something else I was thinking about while I was playing and I kept checking, I, mean, I don't know if anyone noticed, but I kept going over here and looking at track 10 and seeing if I had something on it, which there is now because I did that during the performance. I'm gonna reload all these uh, projects um, because I know I made some sort of alterations and I do not want to keep them. So just go ahead and reload. I was told by uh, Taylor from Electron, he's a brand manager at Electron, he was at Velocity, he was telling me a trick that S used to do or does with his Electron stuff when he performs. And after he plays a show, if you just unplug it, like not turn it off, not hit the switch behind here, but literally pull the jack out it just refresh, it defaults back to the original patterns uh, project state. You turn it off, it remembers where you were. It has a little buffer, it saves that in the memory. But if you just go wank like that, it'll take you right back to where you were when you were supposed to start your set. So that's actually pretty good to know. So it's, you don't have to reload, you can just yank out the power jacks and then plug them back in and that will also reload for you. It might even be faster, not sure. So. That's a cool little tip um, that Electron taught me themselves. But what I wanted to talk about was um, utility. I know I've mentioned this before, but I didn't have it in these tracks and I should have. And you know, and I didn't use it in my show at Velocity and I didn't use it while I performed for you now either. So this is a problem I need to work on. And that is putting a trigger down here on track 10, one of the analog tracks, because we want to use utility noise. And I'm gonna go into this engine and I'm going to select utility noise. I'm gonna bring the decay to infinity. I'm gonna bring the sweep time down. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a high pass because I don't need it to have too much uh, low end. And then give it some resonance here. We're gonna put this trigger down 16 steps so it's just always running. Don't listen to that. Don't you dare listen to that. Shit, is that the pattern I did it on? It's some like goofy shit I'm working on. Um, don't mind that. We'll copy this trig and just go to another pattern. Let's go over to the techno one. Okay. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that trigger down. Actually going to send this through the effects block so that it gets sidechained because that's what I'm doing in this song. Or at least I think that's what I'm doing in this song. I guess I'm not. It doesn't matter. It's getting sidechained in the aux trip. So forget about that. Um, let's go back over here. So here's why we're doing this. We go into our uh, Oh wait, to clear this filter out. We go into our synth engine menu with the utility noise on the syntact, and now we have this. Give a lot of reverb too. So now we have this, the ability to do this. So now we have noise. We have noise, we can shape the noise, we can do all sorts of stuff with it. Literally soak it in reverb, maybe even some delay. Cool, right? There's no reason not to, if you have the setup like me, if you have like a million tracks available to you, there's no reason not to have a noise track. Um, like, why not? Why not have noise that you can introduce? It's great for buildups. Um, it sounds good. The noise on here is really versatile. Like, you can do a lot. You can shape it into uh, hi hats or a snare if you want with the filter and an envelope. So, it's a great engine. Uh, it's probably one of my most used engines. I use particularly dual VCO noise every single time I make a song. Those two engines get used. And then um, and then I use bits a lot. And then this other thing I started to write, it sounds the goofy thing, I'm kind of like. Here. carried away in that so it is it's, it's fun to play that song I'm using it the LFO as an envelope and uh, sending that to the balance and this is on a interesting engine so this envelopes uh, doing this for me maybe it's too slow
The resonance in the dual VCO or the analog filters on the Syntax is pretty extreme. Like you don't need very much resonance for it to feel very resonant. Uh, like to compare it to the digital filters is they're just they're not the same in any regard. You can give the digital filters a lot of resonance before it starts like squelching. This is like squelching immediately. It's pretty intense. This is mod banger. Uh, sorry, I was missing all that chat. Oh, Doug said, "Easy bot, what was the gesture that you did on the DT plus the DN?" Um, probably reloading a saved pattern state and doing a control all to the pitch on the dig attack. I mean, that's kind of like everybody's go-to, right? There's only a few control all tricks that you can do that are like useful on the dig attack. That is one of them is the amplitude. Um, like for instance, we can go here to the amp and we can go, um, I'll save the pattern state. Give it like some reverb and delay here. Sounds like absolute garbage. This also made me think like, this is why you can do one pattern for a song because for instance, say we do some looped recordings with the octa track, right? So we can always just either hold track seven and hit yes with the performance template, or we can just hit yes and arm all three of these buffers depending on how you have your octa track set up. I have my octa track set up in a way that's very easy for me to screw things up. So maybe don't do it the way I do it, but it's more flexible the way I do it. Hey, what the heck? Gosh, I always bump these encoders. Um, okay, so. So you can do something like this, right? Let's go to a different pattern. This is not ready to be played with. No. Let's go to bank two. That's some uh, some like melodic techno type stuff. Um, you can do cool things. Like we'll record a loop. But in that loop, we can have like. Now I'm in that loop. We have that little reverb tail thing. It like acts as part of the sequence. So now we have that loop that is like a new part of the song that wasn't there before. And we just kind of made it up on the spot. I think that's really useful and it allows you to stretch a song much longer. Now we have time to go over here while it's looping. We can adjust these sounds. kind of tunes with that just don't have too much going on. Very telepop music inspired. Unmuted a track, there's not even any content on it. I love that. Kind of tune you only need two patterns for you know i was like I kind of jumped the gun i could have like what i should have done is gone stretch this part of the song out and then like 
brought it way down, you know, like. Like that, that could have been like two minutes into the song. Again, don't need, we don't need more than one pattern. Two is enough for this, for sure. don't really fit this song, this section. We're playing in the garage section, lots of distortions and delays over here. Filters. So like we could record a loop of me playing with these effects. This would be cool, right? We have this like alternate version of the pattern. Pitch decliner. I've never used this effect live. It's a nice breakdown though. Go to the next song. <laughs> Literally go forever with these two patterns, just going back and forth and taking stuff away and altering them and using recordings. to do more I need to play with I need to play with the delays on my kick drums more it's just like instant techno <laughs> all you need is a cool delay and a kick drum what is making those plucky bells you ask that would be the syntax um, that is the, the toy engine where am I getting that okay there it goes what was that pattern? I should work on this song too.
Okay, back to the chat. Distort the noise. Yeah, you could distort the noise, Jordan. That's a good idea. I haven't done that. Isaac Anthony says, I use the MC-707 Channel 8 similar to for noise and drones. Oh, I didn't know that the MC-707 had uh, noise on it. I should have assumed. Has everything else. Can do a lot that the Octatrack can do. I don't like the workflow for me. I have a hard time with the the way you navigate on the screen on the side of the unit. I don't know. It's just hard. It's I, To me, the machine is so much harder than the Octatrack. I, people probably think that's blasphemy because everyone thinks the Octatrack is just like this mysterious box, but... I don't know. MC-707 is the mysterious box to me. That's for sure. Um, Christian Doming vibes. You got a dip. Thanks for sharing. Oh, thanks for hanging out, man. Thanks for the comments. Easy bot, you praise the rhythm, but it never makes an appearance. What's your current take on the device? Oh, Chet. Oh, Chetly. Um, I love the rhythm. The only reason why the rhythm isn't up here is because the syntax is. The syntax, in my opinion, it from the music that I make and the way that I make my music, my workflow, the syntax does everything the rhythm did for me. Um, I do samples on the dig attack. I don't need samples on the rhythm. So for me, the rhythm is a standalone music box. It re it doesn't need anything else. I mean, you could pair it with an Octatrack because it's just a performance mixer to me in that regard. My other Octatrack is for making tunes on the Octatrack, for sampling into it and slicing on the Octatrack, and I love doing that. It's actually one of my favorite ways to make music is just solo Octatrack. It's just for live performance. Having the ability to mute and unmute and all these different synth engines here is just so easy for you to get inspired and get into making music um so it's hard for me to like just do octatrack stuff plus i have all these cool boxes i want to use them you know um but i do love the rhythm it just has an older workflow and i want pattern mutes the the way i work in my music is i have a pattern and when i move to the next pattern a lot of the elements are unmuted i know there is a I can do that in the rhythm by using duplicating kits and having the next pattern um, start with a kit that has all the volumes down and I can bring the volumes up, but it's just not the same. It's just, it's way more work. You're way further up in your head at that point rather than this just does it for you. Um, if they added pattern mutes to any of the Mark II devices, Analog 4, Rhythm, or the Octatrack, then maybe the my other Octatrack would replace my Dig Attack because I would love to have stereo samples on my drums. I would love to have my snares fill both ears. Like, you know, wide, those huge hitting wide snares, those hats that are like, ch -ch, like right up in your ears. Like, I love that stuff, you know? And I can't do that. I can mimic it, but it's just not the same. You know, if I had a sample that was very stereoized, if I had um, inserts per drum voice, I would be insane. The stuff I would do, it's crazy. But, no pattern mutes makes this just so much easier for me to work on. That's really like the thing. And plus the banks, honestly, it's, I would, I don't know if I would ever use the Octrack to replace the dig attack because you only get four parts per bank and I need on the dig attack, the way that they, this is the similar workflow to the Octrack, but it's a part per pattern. So every pattern is its own part. And that's what I want. I want every pattern to have its own part. And I want the Octrack to do that. <laughs> if they added that to the Octrack, I'd probably just, you know, I wouldn't use the dig attack anymore. Um, but I do love the dig attack. Don't get me wrong. It's just the octa track would actually be better in that way. Right now, it's they're different, so it's not better. They're just different. But it would just be better. It would be a better box for the job. Boomy reverb on the kick. Mode phaser in the zone tonight. Oh, thanks, dude. I'm actually very tired, but <laughs> I. I did want to play some music. I have some music that I really like right now, so it's fun to perform it. And um, I like, I, like I said at the beginning of the stream, I feel like I kind of, I hit a, a precipice where I feel, um, where I'm not exploring as much anymore, trying to figure stuff out, and I'm spending more time doing stuff with the, uh, with the workflow that I've. Um, given myself, the workflow that I feel I'm mastering, my own workflow, and I feel like I'm beginning to master my workflow, 
And uh, so I'm just playing music. I'm just writing music now. It's been really cool. Something I mean, everybody I think should do this. You, if you want to get, if you want to get good, and I'm not saying I'm good. I'm just I believe that this is how you get good. Is that you have to, I think, put yourself in a position where you have a deadline. Performances are one of those things. Let yourself play a show. If you think you're gonna, it's gonna be horrible and you're gonna be appalling, you're wrong. You're gonna be great. It's gonna be fantastic and you're gonna feel like a million bucks. And after you do it, even if it's just for some friends, even if it's just on Twitch, you know, after you do it, you're gonna feel good. And you're gonna feel inspired to write more music. And you're gonna feel inspired to get better. You're gonna get inspired to get better at performing and mixing and all of that stuff. Um, I'm really blessed right now that I've been doing playing regular shows every month I play a show now and it's been that way for a couple months and it's just not only has it made my life better because I'm happier because I'm playing music live and that's like my favorite thing to do that's why I'm all about the performance mixer right it's for live music it's for having fun and I have a lot of fun doing it um, but having a gig set up every month encourages me to uh, get better to review my patterns to practice uh, practice my sets uh, figure out ways to move from one part to the next, design new effects, research new sounds. And all of that is inspired by having a deadline. Having deadlines is good. Uh, maybe not in regards to mortality. I'm not sure how I feel about that quite yet. I've been thinking about that quite a bit lately, and I don't like the idea of having a deadline to my mortality. Um, I know it's part of life, but I really don't like it. Um, but when it comes to music, I do like it. I think having a deadline is really important and, um, you know, you cram at the last second, you cram it in. It's good. It's good to go. So do yourself a favor, sign up for an open mic, sign up to play a show, invite your friends over for music, record your music, share it with everybody. Let people put yourself in that situation where people might criticize you and let them do it because sometimes that. Criticism is very helpful and will improve you in the long run, albeit painful at first. That was a, di a diatribe. Uh, forgive me. Really uh, acting like a dad on the internet. I don't mean to do that. I just, I do feel, I do feel strongly about it is all. Um, <laughs> but I'm not internet dad. So take it with a grain of salt, my friends. Um, back to the chat. I'm really enjoying looking at the chat right now. Yeah, I add the TD3 into my setup because I needed an analog 303 type filter. Yeah, I looked into the TD3. You know, I would just like, I don't know. The whole stuff with Behringer has just been, has been a tough thing. I, you know, working at a, a synth shop and all that and like, we carried them, carried Behringer for a moment, despite their controversy that they've had. And uh, then they stopped working with smaller shops. And that was just another thing where I was like, another reason that Behringer bugs me is that they just kind of gave up on us. They're only working with like Sweetwater. So I don't know. I've been, I like, it's enough for me just to pick a different brand for that box, even though the TD3 is so affordable and it definitely sounds as good as the 303. Like, I don't know. I ordered two TD3s when they were announced, just so you know. I, <laughs> um, just those bells make you want a Syntax. The Syntax is really good, man. Your Phantom X and your Mod X are going to have like probably more, more uh, flexible bell sounds than you're going to find here. These engines aren't vi super flexible. You have to really like dig into your LFO section and your envelopes and your, it's all about your sequencing here with the syntax. You want good sounds with the syntax, you gotta sequence interesting patterns. Um, Cause the engines are, like I said, they're not incredibly flexible. It's not like the Digitone where it's just the world's your oyster. Like you can just do whatever you want. And that's not a bad thing. The syntax provides what it needs to provide in a very good way. I'm very happy the way they designed it. So I don't want it to be incredibly flexible like that because you'll just get lost in the sauce and like, well, I won't say I don't want it to be incredibly flexible. I do like the flexibility, but I like what they did is, is my point. The only thing I would add to the EasyBot setup is an iConnect MIDI device so I could add more controllers to the setup. Now, 
I did that. I have that. You can't see it, but I have an MRCC in the corner here. And my whole studio is wired into this stuff. I can sequence the Prophet 5 from here. I can sequence my little modular skiff here. I can sequence my big modular skiff on the other side of the room. It's all, it's all interconnected. It's just not sitting right here. And I thought about maybe, like, did the, does a TX6 have, like, MIDI? Can I use it as a MIDI hub? But it's, like, the USB-C aspect of it, I don't know. Like, it doesn't have a MIDI output. I'm trying to find, like, more uses for my, uh, <laughs> more dad jokes. I'm trying to find more uses for my TX6. I mean, I'm, I'm already happy with it. I'm not, I have no complaints about it now. I will complain about this. I'm not complain, but I'll just sigh in sadness. Both my M8 and my OP1 field are in for repair right now. And that sucks. Particularly with the OP1 field, because I've gone through a few of them now. Um, or two. I've gone through two OP1 fields. Uh, the first one had uh, just weird encoders. They were just like malformed. And then the second one has the loose battery inside of it, which is like a really common thing. It honestly wasn't that big of a deal, but I was just like, I just wanted, I just want a perfect one. I want one that's just perfect. I don't know. Uh, I'm excited to get it back from Teenage Engineering. I intend on having one, and like, I'm not really complaining about Teenage Engineering in this regard. Maybe they jumped the gun with their manufacturing. Like, maybe they could have waited another six months before they released them, but maybe they needed to pay their bills. Like, I don't know. Like, that's the way life is. I mean, I own a company, right? Modbank, and Modbank is a, is a small enough company that I can kind of fund it out of my own pocket from Patreon or from uh, from just my day job. So it's it's a little bit different, but I do understand that that point that you come across where you're like, I need to pay these bills or we're just not going to have any products at all. Um, and I think that's probably maybe where they ended up. <laughs> I don't know why nobody cares about this. I'm just talking out my ass at this point. How do I like the Prophet 5? Doug's got, you got some good questions tonight, Doug. Well, I think you know I love the Prophet 5. It's the best. It's the best ever. Let me see. I guess this uh, perspective doesn't show the Prophet 5. <sighs> Look at that. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Right now, the Prophet 5 is, um, oh, there it is, is running into shallow water, and then from shallow water, going into the microcosm. And this combo of the Prophet 5 into shallow water, into the microcosm, is broken. I've broken music. Music has broken. It's, it'll never be repaired. It's so beautiful. Every note... Here, let me turn up the mix. I mean, I don't know. To me, it just it sounds just, maybe that wasn't the best example, but I've been playing around with it for a while and it just sounds amazing. Um, Microcosm is definitely a keeper. I hesitated on getting it for a while because the price is hefty. It's a beast. It's a beast of, a, of, a, of an effects box um, for the price tag. It does so much, so it's totally... I've been using it with my guitar. I got... <sighs> the Boss Katana Air uh, to play my guitar with so that I could play wireless guitar, and it's amazing. Um, 
I bought the Microcosm and the Boss Katana in the same week because I was like, I really want to put more of my guitar in my music. And I haven't ended up doing that. I just ended up playing more guitar. It didn't end up in this music. But um, yeah, the Microcosm. <laughs> I'm digressing. Back to the Microcosm. Microcosm is a really awesome, awesome pedal. And uh, it has MIDI, so you can sync it to clock. Right now it's synced to my Electron boxes, so whatever tempo the Octatrax produces, producing microcosm has and uh it's really great so i'll be doing a lot of sampling that way ah uh, christian block i care <laughs> i'm glad you do my friend why does your name have a check on it what does that mean <laughs> also you love your mod bank cables what's up dude you're you're a friend I see you, Christian, and I appreciate you. This is my Twitch action. What is the shallow water? Shallow water is a, um, what is the shallow water? I don't know. I can't really, it does so much. It's like, it has like a tremolo in it, has a low pass gate in it, has an LFO in it. It's like a, it's a warble machine. Here, I'll, I'll show you, kind of. This is shallow water at full mix. Now I'm gonna turn the shallow water off, shallow water off, so you'll get the idea of the difference between the two. See, it's perfect. It's perfectly clean sounding. Basically, it makes you sound like Tame Impala, like instantly, or uh, Boards of Canada. It's like a Boards of Canada pedal for a synthesizer. It sounds really good on guitar, but man, it sounds awesome. Prophet 5 is a, a monophonic analog poly, and it's one of the best sounding ones in the world, in my opinion. And uh, running it through the shallow water, which is a really great sounding pedal. A little pricey too, by Fairfield. Fairfield Circuitry? I think it's called, I think the company's called. Uh, Fairfield for sure. But um, it really does a great job of, you know, taking this crisp, perfect sound and making it old. And, s and bringing it more like back to the original profit sound. Ah, verified. You worked at Google back when they acquired YouTube. Oh, sick. I want to get verified. <laughs> that would be awesome. And I'm glad you love your ModBang cables. New stuff coming from ModBang, MIDI cables, glow-in-the-dark MIDI cables, and completely transparent MIDI cables, uh, which are going to look so dope with our Electron boxes. Blue, green, and red cables, and completely clear cables. So expect those in the next couple of months. They're being uh, made right now, and then they have to be shipped. And it's just, it takes a while for it to all come to fruition, but I've already designed them myself. I designed the plugs. I designed the colors and everything. Um, so they are of my design, and uh, it'll be in a couple of months, along with all new patch cables, all new right angle cables. Everything's for performance now, so very slim. Um, should be cool. I'll, you know... We'll talk about that when it comes, but I'm excited to to get them into people's hands. I ha don't have quarter inch six foot cables. I don't have quarter inch. I have quarter inch three point five to quarter inch cables, and then I have quarter inch uh, adapter cables. So we're talking eight inches for guitar pedals. They're right angle cables, and I need to redesign them too because they're not very cool. They're they're good enough. They glow in the dark. That's what's cool about them. They glow in the dark, so they are cool, but um. And uh, they're unbalanced, as you know, as you would expect from a guitar pedal cable. But um, I want them to be have a slimmer jack so that you can fit more guitar pedals next to each other. Because right now the jack sticks out a little bit further than I'd like. Yeah, more mod bang in your future, without a doubt. 
I sure hope so. Mod bang USB cables, that's a, that's gonna be a thing that's not coming in this run. Maybe um, probably next year. I'll look into that. I do it very slowly. I work very slowly on all of my projects. Uh, I do a lot of projects. I have also been started like a graphic design kind of company with uh, using some like mid journey stuff. I've been playing a lot with uh, AI stuff. If you're in my Patreon, you know this because I share images fairly regularly of stuff that I've just, that the AI has designed and shared with me and then I share them with you. Fiction, yes. Oh, what's up, Matt Allen? Fiction, <laughs> you helped me design the logo or finish the, fix the logo. Thank you so much for that, dude. <laughs> I was gonna say, yes, we'd be very much glow in the dark quarter inch cables for my entire setup. Absolutely, we will get that going. Yeah, I have a whole, I have a couple of uh, Mid Journey EasyBot shirts. There's some, I figured out how to get Mid Journey to use text, like fairly regularly. And it took a while, but now I can pretty much, I can, especially with my name, EasyBot, it doesn't have very much trouble. The problem is that it puts robots in every image <laughs> because of bot. It just like tries to turn everything into an Android. And I'm like, that's not actually what my name is about. I mean, it is about a bot, but it's about an AI. It's a, it was a troll. I was a, it was a troll name that I made um, to troll kids in Dota. Not kids, but cause it wasn't that many kids playing in my rank. <laughs> oh, my rank, all the kids are like way higher rank than us old farts playing that game. But I haven't played in a couple of years now. I, for one, welcome the AI overlords. You and me both, dude. Funny that you said that. Um, that's... I don't know if I go into all this crazy nonsense on stream, but... I think that we're like the pupa stage for the AI. Like, we're just the biology that's gonna give birth to this, like, other existence that's going to be like far more superior to our own and mid journey is just kind of an example of how incredible it is but it's not just mid journey ai generated music although it's kind of like seems a little easier than like mid journey mid journey is crazy or dolly too but um ai generated stories wow i played with that for a second that blew my mind ai upscaling <laughs> photoshop can't upscale as fast and as good as a web browser AI upscaler can. A web browser's, it's not a web browser, but it's being hosted on the web, can upscale 8x of an image and retain its fidelity. Photoshop can't do that. Like, I've tried it, it can't. It's incredible, AI is just going to like, phew, whole world's gonna change soon. Um, it really is, like big, like I think really, really soon and like a lot. <laughs> this is electron talk. We're talking about that stuff. I can I can talk about it all the time. Um, I want to I want to play and talk about this this track. So this track, this baseline is um, I mentioned it before I think in a stream, but it's the Manus Iteridus. It's my modular synth. It's the last time I used my modular uh, besides this vocoder, which you saw, maybe you saw the video I did on um, the monolith, and I'm doing a video very soon on this vocoder that I have in the skiff, and I'm gonna be using it soon. You can hear there's some noise that's actually coming from um, the distortion turned up on the Octatrack, but it's only during this track. Um, but yeah, so I'll be doing a vocoder video soon, just because I love it. And I want to talk about vocoders. And if you follow me at all, you know I love vocoders and I love sampling my voice or running drums through the filter banks. It's a 15 channel filter bank, so that's really cool. Yeah, so this track is very rock and roll. And I feel like my music is kind of going back to my roots. I'm getting back to the rock and roll stuff. So let me just play it for you real quick.
it up now, but I didn't screw it up at the show. That's so that's good. Of screw ups in that, like a lot. However, that's okay because we're just practicing. But it was still fun. It was still fun. Uh, easy bot support. 
OT seems a bit backwards without USB MIDI support. It does have... Oh, no, without you. Yeah, it doesn't have USB MIDI. It's old. It's old, dog. Not e not everybody needs the... <laughs> not everybody needs the aux track. Glow in the dark sounds dope. Probably a dumb question, but can you make an L-shaped connection for MIDI cables? I can. I have a couple of those L-shaped cables, Gabriel. Um... Yeah, the problem is that not everybody designs their boxes with the same MIDI connection. So sometimes that L-shaped MIDI cable will be the correct direction, like facing upwards. But a lot of times it'll be facing down. And like, it, it's different per box. So L-shaped MIDI cables don't really... They're not universal like a straight cable is. What works better, in my opinion, and is what I designed, is short plugs of the cable. So it doesn't need an L-shape. It's just a shorter cable plug. But well, that's not, you know, it's not the same. So it's not the same as what you want. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel like we got the dopest private concert tonight. Thanks, man. Oh, dude, thanks, Mode Phaser. Uh, I plan on doing, I mean, I want to do this every Sunday night, and I hope that I have music to perform every time I do it, because that's kind of the point. But also, I love just talking about this gear and doing some educational content whenever I have something to share. I guess. Oh, the thing I wanted to talk about. Okay, so this is um, the thing I was thought I might forget, but I'm remembering now. This is the thing. If you're if you're having some MIDI issues, uh, I remember somebody actually filmed me doing this at a Patchworks show that I played once, where I unplugged my MIDI cables from my boxes and switched over to a different box and started and stopped the pattern while the music was still playing, and it didn't miss a beat. So it's starting and stopping and switching the MIDI cable didn't cause any issues. And this is the same way that I got through the Velocity show when I was having my MIDI problems. And let me show you how. Okay. This is the song I was that was messing with me the most too. So, um, for instance, playing a song like this, my patterns wouldn't switch. That was the problem. My pattern wouldn't go at the right time. It just kept repeating the pattern over and over again. I was like, what the heck? Maybe what I did is I accidentally hit like, you know, chain pattern. I chained it a bunch of times. I don't know. I'm not sure what happened, but it doesn't matter because the way you would solve this is like this. You use a looper, a delay b buffer looper. So right here, this is the Daft Punk effect. It uses the delay buffer. All three of these use delay buffers as loopers, just different timings. So it's that's why you always see me go like, same with this. Because they're really, it's super fun to play with. It sounds good and is in time with the music. And because the octrack track is a master clock, it sounds chef's kiss. Um, but what you can do is like, say something's messed up, you want to move to a new song. Watch this, I'll move to a completely new song. I'll even stop the pattern. Let's go over here. Look, none of the boxes are playing. I got this loop going though. So the original rhythm of the music Right? Or I could have had... I forgot to press play as I was demonstrating that. Let me... Let me not make an ass out of myself. Let's do it again. Okay, it stopped. Can you play again? I'm in a new song. So I could have went like to a completely different bank. I could have unplugged cables. I could have messed with things. Um, there's anything... You can literally do anything and the music will keep playing. However, if you try and do that with a recorded loop, the octatrack will stop, and your looper will stop, and that won't work. So you have to use the delay buffers, because the delay buffers are completely independent of, um, of the transport. That's why that's special. So if you're ever in a bind, and something's messed up, and you want to reset, go back to the very beginning, you even want to turn your machine on and off. Not the octatrack, but these machines. You could turn them on and off even if you needed that. Because that might be a thing. It can happen where you're like, I need a hard reset, because I need to... Something's messed up. Go to a freeze delay scene, like the Daft Punk effect or whatever you design yourself just by making some freeze delay scenes. Doesn't have to be what I've done, but you use the same concept as a delay buffer and then you're safe. You can reset and restart. This is saved my life, not life, but it saved my ass during velocity and um, allowed me to change patterns um, when it wouldn't do it for me. So pretty cool, pretty useful. Looper is magic. Yeah. What does the pump knob do? I'll show you. Let's 
go to a song that. Whoops. You hear it? It's side chain pumping. It pumps. That's what it does. So it's just, you have to be on the LFOs uh, menu and you have to be on track four and you have to be on one of three of the parts in my template to use it. It doesn't work on part four yet because part four doesn't have a filter on that track. So it's not gonna work on part four ever, honestly. But um, it does work on uh, the other parts. That's what it does. It just engages the sidechain pumping. Analog heat is in my closet. It is coming back out. Uh, that I re like, I've had it for years. It's it's actually one of the first electron boxes I bought. I bought an Octatrack and a Octrack first. Then I bought an Analog Heat, and then I bought a Digitact. And uh, you know, years, I don't know, six years ago or something. I think about then was when I bought the Heat. Um, and and I love it. I just I took it out of my setup because it was just taking up space and I didn't need it because I have the I was using it to color my sound and to do like some pseudo compression but then I got the big six and it has the G bus compressor on it and I was just like I'm just gonna use this as my compressor but I do kind of I want to bring it back out and maybe put it here and use it as a compressor again because I was feeling kind of inspired from that Dave Mech video that he released on it I love Dave Mech if Dave Mech ever watches this I think you're awesome, and I think you're, what you do is awesome. So, um, you're a techno wizard. So his uh, his video inspired me, and I want to bring it back. Got to warm up the wilted OT signal. <laughs> wilted, wilted. What? I don't know about wilted. It's going a little far. Uh, sounds a little wilted when I use that lo-fi effect, though. That's for sure. Dave is rad. Yeah. I have an analog heat mark two and have it permanently on the main outputs of the Phantom. Yeah, it's a good idea. It's a good call. Yeah, Mech is definitely the man. I hope he sees this. He's probably not going to. I doubt he watches these streams. They're very long. Um, I do feel like these are kind of like podcasts at this point where you don't even need to watch the content. You can just listen, maybe, if you don't mind my voice or my music. <laughs> Uh, make me feel like an egomaniac or something, a narcissist when I talk about this stuff. I can't help it. That's how I feel when I talk about my own stuff, where I'm like, I don't need, shouldn't, being a narcissist or something, but I shouldn't think that way. That is negative thinking. But yeah, I really do love his music. So yeah, that's kind of what I, that's what I wanted to talk about tonight. Um... I wanted to talk about how many patterns it is for a song, and I wanted to play some music, which is having an audience really inspires me to play, so it's nice that people are here. And I hope that people get the point I was trying to make about how many, um, you can see my, my face always looks, I'm 38 years old, but when I shave my face, I look, I can like, I can pull off like 28, I think, sometimes, but when my beard comes in, I look like I'm like 45. I don't know, I have this weird, I don't get no middle ground for me. Um, but yeah, I hope that people get my point that I was trying to make about the patterns per song because um, I think it's useful for when you're trying to write music to know what your expectations are of yourself. So when I'm writing something that is like electro house, I know I'm gonna have many patterns. There's gonna be variations. I need to work on variations of the pattern. It's gonna be a more of a verse chorus, verse kind of feel to it. Um, when I'm working on uh, techno stuff, maybe it is only one pattern, maybe it's two patterns. And I like that, having that expectation and knowing that that's all I need and that I can move on once I achieve that simple goal of maybe just one pattern. Maybe that's all I need. Maybe I could have a bank full of 12s or a 
you know, full of a bunch of songs, full of 16 songs, and they're all just one pattern long, and I just get good at my effects with my Octatrack, or I get good on my Degatact, or Syntact, or Degatone, and I'm just adjusting those parameters as I go, then I think that's inspiring to think about and to take that and analyze your own music and be like, maybe I'm in my head too much about this. Maybe I'm done with this song already and it's time to move on to the next one. For me, anytime I feel stagnant or I'm like having writer's block with my music, especially when it comes to like sequencers and stuff, I just move on. I just go to the next path. I just go, you know, I'm starting over. Let's go to the next one. That song is done. That's what it means to me. Writer's block? No, you're done. <laughs> you're done writing. Um, you can revisit if you want to, but you don't need to. Maybe that song is finished. You did what you needed to do. And move forward. Um, just keep writing. Just keep making new music. There's just so much music to be made. You just gotta just keep trucking. You know? Just throw down some notes. Implement some weird concepts. Use your arpeggiator, for God's sake. There you go. Arpeggiate. If you're having writer's block, load up your arpeggiator. Instantly brings you into a song, I think. Um, it's just like the easiest way to write songs is using arpeggiators. They're just amazing tools for songwriting. I need to write more patterns. You're 100% right. Good. <laughs> yeah, write, write more patterns. Um, and I, like for me, my workflow with writing patterns is flesh out one good pattern, maybe flesh out uh, what would be considered a chorus and copy it over. Um, and edit it, and maybe turn it into an actual chorus. Maybe write a verse and then copy it over to the next one and and mess with it until it's a chorus, or until it's a, a climax. And uh, or maybe start at that climactic point and copy that pattern over to the pattern previous to that pattern and bring it down so that it's more chill. You know what I mean? That's just like flesh out one pattern, copy that pattern and edit. Flesh it out, copy it edit, flesh it out, copy it, edit. That's the beauty of um, hardware music. And I think it's really fast. Also something to mention, I um, I downloaded the free trial. I saw Richard Devine's little clip of him using uh, Scholar. It's like Drum Scholar, Pattern Scholar. I forget what it's called. Looking to see if I have, I mean, I have it. No, I have it loaded. Beat Scholar. So I downloaded a demo of Beat Scholar. And it's dope. It's actually pretty legit. And I like, like, Bitwig doesn't really have a sequencer, like a good sequencer. It's just piano roll stuff, you know? It has some sequencing stuff it can do, but it's not, not intuitive or fun to sequence on. It's just great for, you know, doing some standard DAW style music making. Um, but this plugin kind of reminds me of Electron, but it's actually... Um, thinking about patterns in a way that I hadn't and uh, I do recommend it so you should check it out it's like 75 bucks but you can just get the trial for 14 days to see if you like it downloads instantly it's pretty cool and you just you can literally just in Bitwig at least you can just drag over samples from your sample library and drop them right into the instrument chains and channels in the VST and just go right to town with your favorite samples so it's pretty cool um, I don't have, do I have a, a way to show you? Maybe I can click on this, we'll see. Nope. No, 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 we're not, I'm not going crazy tonight with a random, seeing if I have things set up I, that I don't. I'm sure I don't. Randomize your locks is my go-to. Yeah, randomize locks is really cool. Um, I do like that one. Started figuring out how to use random locks in different ways for show. Well, also, what do you mean by randomize your locks? Randomize your locks? Do you just mean randomize the menus on your, on your synth? What do you mean exactly? How are you randomizing your locks? Um, I'll just sit here and, and wait for that answer. Slice lock on the OT. Oh, I was like saying, I was like, I don't know about randomizing parameter locks on any device. 
but you can randomize the slices in the OT. Yes, that's actually, I mean, that's how I'm using my OT right now. I'm randomizing the slices, um, or I have that as one of my scenes. And that's in one of my templates, the, my performance template, still on beta six. I'll be releasing beta seven later this week. That's my plan. Maybe I'll call it 2.0, 2.1, I don't know. Um, but I'm always fleshing it out and coming up with new ideas. Some, I was talking with Trovarsi and Alex from WMD and WMD, God rest their soul. And I hope that WMD comes back. Um, but they were talking to me, they were using my performance template. They used it at Velocity, which is so cool to see that they were using my template. And um, they gave me a little shout out during their presentation, which felt nice. So thank you for the shout out. If you end up watching this, that's, it, meant, it means the world to me. Um, but I was saying to Trovarsi that part of me almost wants to just start the whole thing over from scratch. I mean, I'll keep what I have, but do another version of it and start working on a whole nother version. Cause I have some ideas on how I would do it again. Some ways to some effects where they'd be positioned so that I could use like the sidechain pumping on every single part. I can't use it on every single part right now. I can only use it on three parts and I would like it to be available on all the parts for songwriting and for performance so that you can use the pump sticker on everything. Right now you can't do that. But um you can for the I mean you can for the most part. You can program it in yourself if you want to, but I think it would be cool. I don't know. It sounds like a lot of work though and uh already feeling pretty busy. Oh, thank you for saying that. I appreciate that uh Isaac. That was really cool. The template is the bomb. Appreciate that, Mode Facer. Yeah. Like a bouncy melody and a variation using randomized slices. Me too. I think that's really fun and very cool. <laughs> All right. Um, you guys are great. It's been a close to two hours, which is typical for me. Play a lot of music. We've had a lot of discussion. I really appreciate everybody hanging out. I guess the audio turned out all right. I'm growing my mustache again. That's the important takeaway for tonight. Um, <laughs> whatever, I'm such a dork. Um, I'm gonna let you guys go. Be sure to check out my performance template. I'll have a link to it in the description of the video. I will have a link to join the Discord. We have about 1,700 members in the Discord. Incredible. Come and hang out with us. Super active marketplace. Great place to meet people and um, to ask questions about lots of different pieces of gear. We have a Teenage Engineering channel now. We have a Moog channel. We have an Electron channel for all the separate boxes. Um, we have a self-care channel, a plants channel, a pets channel. Um, and we're gonna be doing another compilation soon, uh, either Two-Step, Synthwave. Um, Two-Step, Synthwave, Acid is the other choice. And then one more trance. So it's gonna be a vote. We're gonna be voting on those four. And uh, a lucky, not lucky, but if, you get, if your music gets upvoted enough, we'll put you on the physical release for the track, for the uh, compilation. So we do physical releases for our compilations. It's really cool. And we're gonna let the community pick who gets on the physical release, because it's not fair that somebody like me picks or anyone else, because I like, I can't decide what, we have to do it as a whole, as a community. But uh, no matter what, if you do the compilation, you get on the compilation, it's just a matter of getting on the physical release because we can only fit so many people on it. That's the only reason. Otherwise we would put everybody on it. We want everyone to be on the physical release. The stipulations for doing the compilation is joining it. Firstly, you gotta sign up. We don't have the sign up sheet yet, but it's coming um, in the next week or so. And uh, then you, create a track. I would like it to be done with hardware, uh, not like an Ableton, 100% Ableton thing. That's like, I don't know. Kind of the point is that people use their gear is the idea. So you can use Ableton, but you've got to use hardware as well. And um, you have to mix it between minus 12 and negative 60, 16 dB, minus 12 to minus 16 dB. That's your mix. Do not master your audio. If once you choose it, uh, once you finish, no mastering, we are going to have a mastering engineer do it for us. So that's just me talking about the compilation. That will be coming up soon. I'll be talking about that in much more detail once I have it all ironed out and I start doing announcements in the Discord. So look forward to that if you wanna get involved on in the compilation. Um, 
it's going to be happening soon. This will be our fourth compilation. And uh, I'm super stoked about it. I love it. This is one of those things where the deadline is going to help you make music. So please join and uh, have fun. So, okay, I'm going to let you guys go. Everybody have a great night. Um, I appreciate you all very much. Isaac Anthony, I never master. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Um, I'll see you next Sunday at 7 p.m. if all goes well. Since things are cooling down, I'm much more apt to stream. So, y'all are fantastic. Have a great night. See you next time. Join the Discord. Hang out. <laughs>